Hi, welcome to this presentation this morning on Automation Studio E7.1. Uh, the webinar today will be on the electrical part of Automation Studio. So it's going to be a quick overview of the AC, DC, and motor control. We will use the symbols to create schematics and also the illustrated component. So this is very a quick overview of these uh, different part of the software. If you need or if you would like to schedule an online presentation where we can go more in depth in what you want to see for your program with you and your colleagues, please don't hesitate to contact us directly and we can schedule an online presentation uh, with you and your colleagues. Okay. Uh, today also, this will last about 45 minutes. At the end of the presentation, we'll also do the part two of our multi-technology project. So we started last week with the Illustrate Pneumatic portion here. Today, we'll be doing the Illustrated Motor Control part and also add the, P the PLC, which we've also created Illustrated Images so students, they can learn how to wire up the PLC and then we can write the program inside to simulate the circuit. So we are a bit, um, we are too many people online uh, for this webinar Therefore, it will not be possible to uh, answer question uh, by giving you the mic uh, as we go through the presentation. But please use the GoToMeeting interface. You can post uh, questions directly on the interface and we will answer them as we go. Uh, one of my colleagues is also here with me that will be able to answer the questions. Or at the end of the presentation, we will open the mic there and then we'll be able to answer any questions that you may have okay for the the question part at the end there's not really a, a time set for that so we'll be available as long as needed so thank you again for being here today and let's start the presentation on automation studio electrical part so this is the interface of automation studio as you can see we cover multiple technologies we cover hydraulics proportional hydraulic pneumatic drive and transmissions element, we have electrical control for real logic circuits to, to do, let's say, electro-pneumatic, electro-hydraulic. We have logic gates, uh, PLCs for Allen Bradley, Siemens. We also have a new one, Mitsubishi, that's coming out in a couple days. And we have the electro-technical module for AC, DC motor control, the one-line diagram, mathematical block, and HMI. So basically, Right now, I'm using a electrotechnical document. So if I click here, I can actually have some of the components which are commonly used, but I can also expand the electrotechnical to see a lot more components in each subcategories. So let's just start by building a basic DC circuit. So I can simply drag and drop a power source like that. Let me zoom in a bit. I'm gonna then take a resistance resistor here, which is a thousand ohm. I'll leave it like that. If I want to add another one, it's Windows based. I can hit the control key and just drag it like this. Or I could have done a cut and paste or just do control C, control V. Okay. Let's say I want this one to be 2000 ohm. I can click on it and actually change here its properties. So I want to write in kilo ohm and let's put two kilo ohm like this. So now when I close, I have my 1000 ohm and 2 kilo ohm. I can then directly put my cursor on the connection point and make the connections between them. As simple as that. Then once I've created the circuit like this, I can also edit if I want to change the line path and things like that. I can directly go into the simulation mode, start simulation, and actually use measuring tool to take measurements. So I can use like a multimeter like this and simply go into DC mode and take measurement on my circuit. I can go like this and actually bring my probes wherever I want. Okay. If I want to measure the current, for example, I would then need to go here current and disconnect the circuit then insert my probes to measure the current. Or I could have actually, if I do reconnect, I could have used the multimeter clamp like that here, 
use the current for DC and go directly on the line to see the current as well. Okay, so we have these two tools that you can use to measure your schematic. So as you can see, it's very simple. We just drag and drop components, we connect them and we can simulate right away. We can change properties and so on, okay? We are also, um, we've added recently some illustrated libraries. These illustrated libraries are to have a more graphical view of the real components. So for example, if I go here on the first icon, open library, I'm going to open the DC library here. And now you see in this library, I have some real looking components. So let's go and get a battery and power supply. So I have 24 volt here. So if I want to reproduce this, I would actually have to take my DC power supply. Then I'm going to take a resistor. So I have a thousand ohm. So here I'm going to take my one kilo ohm resistance and a 2000 kilo ohm. I don't have a 2000 here, so I'm going to use a 2.2. Okay, just for the purpose, because we have pre-entered some, but as you know, there's 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 many many that can be used. So if there's one that you current that you use all the time and you would like us to add it in there, just let us know and we can add it, no problem. Then I can create my schematic. So if I want to reproduce exactly what I have here, I would go from the plus here, go like this, like this, and bring this one back down here, like that. So let's click on this one and make it 2.2 kilo ohm, just so we have the same values. Click twice on it, and I can put here 2.2. So you see on the same diagram, I can include illustrated view and symbolic view. So when I start the simulation, here I'm just going to raise that to 24 volt. So hold on, I'm just raising it. There you go. And now if I take the, the measurements, I should have the same values. I can take measurements on this circuit here like that. Or I can actually take measurements directly on my illustrated view as well. Same way I would have done it above, but this time using the illustrated library. So this is something that we do and then it's more visual. A lot of people during the COVID situation, they lost access to their equipment. So being able to see a graphic view versus a symbol really helps students also to uh, understand and uh, to replicate those with the real equipment. We've created these, the DC library basically was done to use on a breadboard, okay? So we have created a model of a document. So if you click on the home tab here, I can go a new doc, a new project. And on this new project, I'm going to choose electrical breadboard. So on this document, we have a breadboard that's already been designed on which you can directly put your components on it and connect them and take measurements as you would on a real piece of equipment. So I can do the exact same things. I can take my one kilo ohm, let's say resistor. I can connect it here. And then I can connect the 2.2 that we had before. Connect it here. Okay, I want to zoom in a bit because I want to see a bit bigger. There you go. And then I'm going to use the DC, which I'm going to choose here to 24 volt, but I can do that only in simulation. Okay, so, so for now, let's just bring this on my plus and minus. And I can actually just come here and do the same thing. So now if I launch the simulation, I can show the little dots here. I can use my multimeter also. So let's just click here and put 24 volt. And I can come and take measurements directly on my breadboard as well. Exactly like we did before. Okay, so on the breadboard, we actually have components in this library. So we have batteries, we have a function generator also, resistors, we have capacitors, 
uh, polarized capacitors, we have inductors, diode, some LEDs, and some lamps, push buttons, switches, uh, photocell, buzzer, gates, DC motor. So a couple of components like that that you can use on your breadboard. And if you do have some uh, components that you would like to be to see added to this library, well, it's very important to communicate with us because we want this library to grow based on our customer needs. Okay, so it is important that you let us know, contact your sales representative and tell them, listen, I use a breadboard, I'm missing this component, and then let us know and we can definitely add them to the list. So these illustrated libraries like that are also made for some specific use. We've received a lot of requests also for residential electricity. Okay, so if I just open a demonstration file to show you, I'm going to open one that has uh, multiple components in it, but just to show you what can be done. So residential electricity. Let's go for uh, this one here. So as you can see, we have some lamps, some two-way switches, uh, outlets, GFI, uh, doorbell. So if I open the library again, I click on this orange book, and in here I'm going to get renew, uh, residential electricity. And when I open it, I'm going to have the same components here. So we have switches, lights, uh, photo sensor, outlets, uh, same thing, Marriott's junction box, electrical panel with breakers, uh, doorbell, power source, thermostat, also eaters. If you want to show the current, you know, that different eaters will take and things like that, you can definitely connect those. And when we launch the simulation, I can take measurement also with my multimeter on the schematic. That's not a problem. But you see, for example, I have my lights open here. When I flip this switch, it's a three-way connection, so I can see my light working. Same thing, I can test my fan, which is working right now. If I test my overload, I just, you see it's disconnecting, and then I do reset, it goes again. And the doorbell, if I hit here, I'm actually hearing the bells ringing like that. So I can take here some measurements on my electrical train panel so these again are components that were asked by our customers so if you work with this library and you're missing components again we really want to hear you to have your feedback and we will implement these new components okay same thing we also have for renewable energy so for solar panel wind turbine so let me open a renewable energy circuit to show you what type of schematic we have. So this one is a solar uh, circuit on which we have uh, different uh, panels and we have the, con the, the, the components needed which also uh, control some lights just to see the effect and the battery charging. So in Automation Studio, I haven't showed you yet because, it's, like I said, this is a very quick introduction. We see a lot of different options here. And if you do have a need for a more more in-depth, you let us know, we'll schedule one for you, okay? So this is actually a uh, solar connected lights and heater. So if I start simulation, you see I'm charging my battery. Depending on the sun, I can also vary here the strength of the sun that will increase, you see, the charging speed. Okay, at one point, let me just shrink that a bit so I see a bit more the schematic. So you see at one point, I'm going to switch here, the MPPT, to actually send the voltage through my system. When I reach a minimum of 120 volt, I think, or 115. So it's going up. And you see now at 110 volt, it switched to the system. So now I have some voltage to work with, and I can just turn on my lights, and I can see that I'm... I'm still increasing the battery because it doesn't take a lot. But if I take the heater also, you see now it's kind it's it's barely making it because of the current that I'm using. Okay? So you can actually have if you have two heaters connected and things like that, you'll see the difference. 
in the voltage that you're taking. But here you see, now it stopped because I've reached the 120, the maximum of my battery. And if I use this, now I'm just draining it because I'm not taking any supply from the, the, the solar panel. So I'm just going to drain it down till, until I reach a minimum set value here in my MPPT, which will relaunch the input voltage to be able to go to the battery. Okay, so we have wind turbines and the same thing if you stop here, if you go in the library, if I click on the orange book, you see we have renewable energy. If I click here, I have my different components with ambient sensors for temperature, wind, light. We also have the wind turbines that we can use. So you see these libraries are made to be able to create schematic using more real looking components. But we have all those things also in the symbolic library. Okay. For example, if I go to the generic library and I go here in the transmission, energy source, you see my wind turbines are here. It's just that this is more like a symbol instead of having like a real image to look at like that. Okay, so that explained a bit the illustrated library that we have. And now uh, we've seen the basic DC, you know, just resistors, circuit like that, very simple. Let me just open uh, a demonstration in which we use both, both symbols and also graphic view of the, the basic that we did before. But this one's a bit more, uh, you see, a bit more advanced. And because we can insert pictures and text and document in Automation Studio, we can document our schematic also. So it's sometimes easier for students to understand when they see a graphic view like this. So now if we launch the simulation, so we have our two circuits. Again, I can take the multimeter, take measurements. That's not a problem. And here you see we have a function generator. So if I turn it on, let's say with square wave, you can see what the circuit is here. So if I click on the capacitor and I modify the capacitor, you'll see that on the wave, you see that I'm changing what's happening on the oscilloscope. And then I can also use a different wave if I want. It's a wave like that or a sinus wave like this. And if I play, click on the inductance and I modify it also, you see the difference directly on the plotter, on the oscilloscope, sorry. So this is the basic uh, DC uh, that we can do with Automation Studio. Now let's build a quick three-phase motor circuit. So let's just start a blank screen. So let's just do a new project here again. And let's choose electrical ACDC. I'm going to say it again, just so you don't remember, so you don't forget, but this is actually a very quick overview. So we can schedule an online presentation with you and your colleagues if you need a more in-depth, okay? So I'm going to go into my electrotechnical here and simply build a very quick three-phase motor circuit. So let's just put like a, our L1, L2, L3, our three-phase. I'm going to make something very simple, so I'm going to put like a circuit breaker here. Let's call it, let's say, uh, BR1, okay? I'm going to use a contactor here. I'm going to put a, an overload. Let's call it OL. And then I'm going to put a motor. You see, by default, we display all these things, but it's just a bit too much. So I'm going to erase that, erase that, and just keep the RPM, okay? So now I'm going to zoom back out and I can put a wire between each component like that one by one, but I'm a bit lazy. So I'm going to use the multi polyphase wire. If I click on it here, I'm going to make directly L1, L2, L3 at once. And you see, for example, if I take the motor and I turn it, it did rotation like that. And I put it down here for any reason that I, you know, if I use my multi-phase wire, my multi-polyphase uh, wire, sorry, if I go like this, you see, automatically just have a nice drawing like this. So this is, if I just start the simulation, let me just get rid of the multimeter. 
I just close this here and it's not spinning because obviously I have my contactor here which is open. So I need to create the electrical circuit to control this. So I'm going to take two phase. So let's take a transformer like this here. And I'm going to connect this on the two phase here. You see the wires are not power wires anymore. I can right click on it and choose power wire and this one power wire also. You see we have a bunch of wires with uh, the numbers that are showing all over the place which could be confusing for students. There's two things. First, you can use here in the edit tab the align wire satellite. This, it wherever you make the line, the numbers will be displayed there. So you see you can make it show like this so it's a bit more easy to understand. Or you can simply go to the view tab and then remove the power wire numbers and they go away. You don't want to see the port numbers as well, you just remove the port names like that. Okay, it's up to you the way you want your students to see your schematic. So now let's put the push button here. And I'm going to call this, let's say, start. I'm going to put it normally close here because I want to be able to stop it also. Call this stop. I'm going to put a relay here because I want to be able to trigger my contactor up there. So let's call this C1 for contactor 1. So when I connect this like that, like this, so let's connect these together. And you see now I see my command wire numbers, so I can just go here and just remove the command wire numbers. Now I need to associate this, these contacts here of the overload to my C1. So I click twice on it, and you see C1 is here, I click twice. And now they are linked together. So if I start the simulation again this time, and I close the breaker like that, and I push start, you see the motor spin? If I go, it stops. It's, it doesn't stop very quickly because if you click on it, you see there is no torque on it. So if I increase the torque a bit, you see now it, it turns off much quicker. If I start it, release it, you see that's 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 pretty good okay so you can adjust the torque so it goes a bit further or just stops right away so we've created our three-phase motor circuit but I just want to push start once and the motor always spin so I'm gonna add a normally open contact down here I'm gonna link it to C1 again and I'm gonna latch it like that to my start but I want to do a bit more I want to be able to my overload to trip and see what's going to happen. So if I click twice on my overload, I can go to the builder here and I'm going to change the current, let's say to 12 amp. And I may want to display on my circuit the, uh, the amps here. Okay. So that one that's done. Okay. So if I prove. You see now it's 12 amp on my circuit. I can place it wherever I want. And I want to also display the, the, the tripping time. So I'm going to click twice on it. Go back to the data because this is something we want to see about this component. I want to see the tripping countdown. Which I'll put down here. And I'm even going to put, let's say, a color for that. I'm going to put it blue. Just so it's different. And now I need to have here my overload contact that will eventually open if I trip this. So I'm going to go to my control. I'm going to take my relay contact and go here and take a normally close thermal overload, which I will drop directly on the line here and call it and link it to OL. So I'm going to filter here for O and you see OL is over here. Click twice. And now I have my circuit. So let's start the simulation again. Start this ear, push the motor start, it's spinning. Right now, if I use my multimeter clamp, I see that I have right now six amp in the circuit. Everything works well. But then if I click on the motor and I play with the torque as it spin, you see the current increase. And when I go above 12 amp, 
my overload is going to open in about 30 seconds. If I go higher, the current, you see now in 3 seconds it's going to trip. So 2, 1, 0, click, it open and stop the motor. So you can very easily show students what happens if, let's say, your, the current you know, is too strong or if you lose a phase, what's going to happen. So with the simulation like that, you don't break anything. You can just do the simulation many times and just make students better understand before they move on to the equipment. Okay, something important I did not show you at the beginning is that you have the capability also to make your own library. You see how I was going through the NEMO here, navigating through a different section, which could be overwhelming for students sometimes. So what we can do is we can actually create a custom library. So if I click here, new library, it's going to ask me to save it somewhere. So let's just save it here as a test, let's say test. It could be your company name, your school name, your own name. It's up to you. Okay. Then I'm going to create a category called electrical and a subcategory to this called, let's say, lab one. If this is your lab one, for example, you can take these components and simply put them in the library like that. So all the little changes we made, you know, when we set this to 12 amp, you don't need to do it anymore because when the student's going to take it out from the library, everything's going to be there. The tripping time, the 12 amp, everything is pre-configured. So you can create a library like that with all the components required for this lab. And go on and then you can make like as many as you want in here. And if you want, you can also combine, uh, you see, for example, if you go into renewable energy, and then you take a motor here, an AC motor like this, for example. Okay, and you want this motor, let me just erase that again, because I just want to see the speed. And it's a bit big, you know, because it's big. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to unlock the size and just shrink it a bit like that. Okay, and if I want the students to connect this motor instead of this, well, I'm just going to go in my library and simply drag and drop this motor like that in here. So we can combine symbols illustrated in the library also. Okay. So now I'm going to show you a demonstration file of a three-phase circuit like this in which we're, uh, sorry, in which we use uh, illustrated view and the symbolic view also. Okay. So we can combine both on the same circuit as we did before. So you see here, if I start simulation, I got my amp meter, I can still go ahead like, like we did before. I can just come here and start and then take the current. You see it's starting current is much higher, then it goes down, stabilize. Then on this part here, which is more like a, a graphic view, I can do the same thing. You see if I push forward, my motor spin, I can take measurement also on this circuit. If I hit the stop here, I can reset, go the other way around. So again, during the pandemic, a lot of school lost access to their trainers. Let me just zoom all components. So being able to show the students the symbolic view like that versus the, connect, the connections can be very different for them. And it really helps them to understand as well. Okay. I'm going to show you something, another one very basic as a relay contact to show you. On this one here, it's, a, it's just a relay, a simple relay. Okay. But to show that symbol is so much different than the view. So let's zoom all this. You see here, if I simulate, let me just get rid of the clamp. So you see here, as simple as that. You push a button, you energize test, which close this and open the light. But wiring this up on a real Kuiper looking like a relay, it is much different. The results the same. But to be able to show them, you need to energize the pin 2 and 7, which is the coil of the relay. And then they can rely on the, on the numbers here and make their connections and actually feel like they're wiring up the real relay. The last thing I want to show you before we go on to uh, showing you uh, the part two of our multi-technology circuit is that we can also put faults into components in automation studio 
For example, you see if I click twice on this wire, I can go in troubleshooting and declare this wire to be cut and actually associate that with a toggle switch. For example, let's just cut this wire and let's call it, let's say, um, fault one. Okay. I approve and I close. Now I'm going to go here and take in my generic component here. Let me just lock the library in place. I'm going to go into my HMI and simply take a toggle switch. And I'm going to call this fault one. Let me just shrink it a bit. It's a bit too big. Like this. So now I just need to link the wire here to the fear to the toggle switch. So if I click on the toggle switch, go into internal links, and you see the fault one is over here. Click twice, the link is made at the bottom. So now if I launch a simulation again, I hit start. You see everything works well. But then if I, let me zoom in, you see everything works. If I just flip that switch now, you see it's not working anymore. So students need to figure out what's going on. And then with using the measuring instrument, they can figure out, okay, that this wire is cut. But so you can insert faults like that on all kinds of components in your project to create troubleshooting scenarios for your students. Okay, let me show you a circuit on which we've put uh, some faults that we've done with a customer. And what we've done also is we've applied permission. So if I'm a student and I'm going to open this file, I will not be able to click twice on a component to see the properties or modify the layout of the circuit. Let's just open the circuit and see how it works. So it's like a roll-up door on which we have different faults that have been assigned. So this is the actual project, you see. So this is, I'm opening it like a student right now. So you see if I try to move these around, it says missing rights. If I try to click twice on the motor to go see the properties inside, you do not have the rights to access technological components. So we can set all kinds of protection like that. So the students, all it can do it can launch the simulation. Then we have a little uh, screen like that that will show up to show the students what they can access in the toolbar. And then when it's closed, I can use my multimeter uh, on my schematic, no problem. So right now, if I want to test it, if I push up here, the door goes up. If I push down, the door goes down. If there's an obstruction here, up, it's going to go back up automatically and I cannot go down anymore until I remove the obstruction here, and then it's going to go down. So everything works well. You can test and everything works. But then you flip, let's say, the fault here. And then when I try to go up, it's not even working. So what's going on? He needs to measure and try to figure out what the issue is. OK, when he thinks that he has the, the solved the problem, he can write down his, you know, his, his finding and how he did it. He can also go here in the tools and the video to record what you've done, okay, and explain that to the, the, to the teacher. But what we're going to do here now is that in the simulation, once he thinks that he solved the skill, the, the, the test one, he can turn it back off, and you see now everything works fine again. And then if you flip the fault, the practice one here, it goes up. No, it doesn't even go up anymore, but it, that could be another problem. So you see, so there's all kinds of fault here that you can do. For example, if I'm losing the fault four here, goes up, it doesn't go up, but here it's closed. And if I go up, you see, look, the current. Okay, let's, let's see something here. If I stop the simulation and I launch it again, because I'll show you what the problem is on the last fault, is that the motor is jammed. It's seized, let's say. So if I take the clamp meter, and I take the measurement on the current here, and I start the fault 4, and I push button up here, look at the current, 48 amp, and my overload's going to trip after a minute. Then it stops. So how come it does that? 
Well, I need to know. I know it's the mortar's jam, but the students need to figure out what it is. Okay, so we can create like multiple faults like that. We can even trigger one toggle switch, which will start two faults on the circuit. Okay, so this is something very interesting as well. So now let's move on to the, the multi-technology circuit, sorry, the part two of this circuit that we'll do in Automation Studio to complement the part one that we've already done. Okay, so let's move on to this. Okay, so now let's build the part two of the multi-technology project. So this part here. So let's open the one that we've done the last time with the pneumatic part of it. Okay, so let's open the part one of our multi-technology circuit to which we will be adding today the electrical part. So this is what we did uh, last week, if you remember. So when I start simulation, you see we actually created our pneumatic circuit. If I provide air to the system. Now the cylinder will not be moving because we haven't created the command part. But again, if I look here and I open the variable manager, I can actually force the soul solenoid. So if I look for soul, you see if I force soul one, soul one extend, soul two retract. Okay, so now we'll build the electrical part to control the system automatically. And obviously what we want to do also is that instead of having a motor here spinning the compressor, we want the feedback of the motor to come from the electrical circuit. Okay, so let's now open a new document to this project and this document is going to be an electrotechnical diagram and we'll choose the ACDC model. So now I have this page but if you look in the project explorer here you see we have two documents the electrotechnical and the diagram one which is our part one of our system. So now to create the electrical circuit that we've seen in the PowerPoint before I need to use the Illustrated Library Recall Renewable Energy, okay? Here in the NEMA, in the Electrotechnical NEMA, there's a bunch of things which relate more to motor control, okay? So we will probably create a new section soon. We will remove these from there and actually create a section for motor control, okay? But I also need to use another one that was created more like on a custom uh, as per request from customers, okay? And basically to access this library, I just need to go and here on our website, so famictech.com slash edu, so this is the educational part. If you go to support and you go forum, on the forum here, on the educational edition section, we have a bunch of demonstration files, some quick start guides, recorded webinars. So here, for example, I will go into the custom libraries. And you see here, I have some of the libraries, but the one that I want, it's actually this one here, motor control contactor. If I click on it, you see? So I will be needing some of the components from this library to actually use in the circuit. So I simply download this file. It's a PRLX file, okay? Once it's downloaded, all you need to do basically is you need to go in this icon here which says Open Library. So the one that I want to use is actually the electrical control here, electrical components, V2. If I open it, you see it now, I have another tab with this library and I'm gonna have here some components which were created, again, you know when we, rem when we tell you that when you need a component, you can contact us and we'll do what we can to actually create this component. So this is where we actually can store them and then send it to you also afterwards. And down the road, these will be added to the main one that we, we saw before, okay? So let's start by building this schematic. So what I need to do first, I need to have an input voltage. So, uh, I'm going to come here and let's go into energy source. I need a three phase source. I'll take something like this. Or I can take uh, this icon like that to show it comes from outside, let's say. Right now, this one is 208 volt. Let me zoom in a bit so you see better. So we need to put that to have a 408 volt. 
for the circuit that we need to do. So I can simply double click on it. And here, instead of 208, I'm going to put 408 volt. And now on my schematic, I have my 408. Okay, so now we actually need to have my contactor. So I'm going to go into my other library, contactor here. And I'm going to take a contactor like that. And I also need to have uh, an overload. So I'm going to go into overload here. Take this. You see that the, the dots will go over each other. And the connection goes black. That means it's connected. So then I can just send this to back. Uh, order send to back to be like this. So now it looks like it's only one unit. And I think when you buy these type of components, they can actually look like that once they're connected together. Okay. So now uh, that we have this, we're going to need a motor. So I'm going to come here and actually go into the motors and simply take a motor down here. Okay, it's a bit it's a bit big. So again, uh, like we did last time, I'm going to unlock the size and shrink it. Something you need to take to pay attention. Okay, when I reduce it like that, you see my connection dots right now are actually uh, on the grid. Okay, if I scale it like this, I'm going to lose the grid. Okay, but I know about it and I'm I'm ready to to live with it because I actually want to have a bit of a smaller engine on my schematic. Again, I want to take these off. I just want to see the speed of the motor. Okay, so let's say it like that. And let's just flip the motor because I want to go the other way around. So edit, position, and flip it like that. And I'm just going to bring it back. Okay, so now that I have my elements, I'm just going to wire them together now. So let's just take this and actually connect it with my, my contactor like that. Again, if you can select the, the, the lines and you can right click and say power wire. Okay, if you want them to be thicker for the command. Same thing here, I'm going to con connect this to my motor. Like this. So now it's connected. Okay, so if I come here, let me just do a zoom all, and I launch a simulation. Right now it's not starting because I, I'm not triggering the A11 and A2 on this uh, contactor. So let's put a push button and close this to see how it's going to react. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to have to put a transformer because I want to reduce this to 120 volt. So go for a transformer like this. Again, it's a bit too big, so let's just do I'd unlock the size and just shrink it a bit like that. You see, it's 208 to 120. I need 408 to 120. So I click twice on my com component. Even if they are illustrated component, you still have access to all the data like that in the software. Okay, so let's change that to 408. To 120. So if I close, now I have 408. So I need to connect this to two phase. So let's connect this here. You see, the software is asking me where I want to connect because it's an electrical wire. We can't really split it in the middle of another one. So we can do this, or I can insert a junction and connect to it. Okay, that's up to you to do. And I'm going to put that a power wire. And I'm going to come here. Same thing and convert that to the power wire. So now I have 120 volt coming out. So what I'm going to do just to test if my component works well, I'm just going to put like a, a simple push button. Okay, so I'm going to go into here. Uh, let's say, let, let's take just a generic one from the library. You see, like I was telling you before, we can very easily combine. So let's go like this. Let's just uh, say start. You can give it a name. So if I connect this ear, 
connect this over here and this one here like that I'm just gonna take out the wires like we did before if you command and power wire number and the ports name too just so it's a bit easier to see so now if I launch the simulation again if I zoom out start simulation if I push start you see my motor is spinning at the bottom you see what it like exactly the same as we did before with the symbol you see how it takes a lot of time to slow down because there's no there's no torque at all it's like spinning in perfect condition so let's click on it and just add a very little torque let's say let's put it to like three so now if I start it again and I release you see it turns turns off pretty quickly so you see now that our system is working but the goal is not to actually start the motor like that directly but to have this being turned on by a logic in my PLC okay so let's just stop the simulation move it a bit like this on the side okay now to bring the compact logic onto the schematic I'm gonna need to go and open the PLC library so I'm gonna click on this book here open library and from here I'm gonna choose illustrated PLCs so when this library is open we can actually see the different brands that we have at this time but again upon request we can add the uh, some PLC so we have uh, some Schneiders okay we have for a standard diagram and electrotechnical diagram because as you know on the electrotechnical we can only bring AC DC motor control parts so we've created the PLC that could be also added to these so we have Schneider we have some uh, Mitsubishi, Amran, Eaton, Koyo you know some of you may, may, may know those uh, click uh, Koyo models uh, we have some from Siemens also we have um, the S7 1200 the 200 also the logo for Alan Bradley here I'm gonna use actually the compact logic so let me just drag that on my schematic so here it is so you can see here on the PLC we tried to reproduce as close as possible uh, the real component but as you know the connectors are directly here on the compact logic but for us in automation studio it was kind of a bit hard to have all the wires coming in here for still being visible so we've just added cards like that and all we need to do is we actually just need to come and just put jumpers like that between these two cards just to to connect them like that to our base unit okay so this is a bit different but that's what we found the best way to actually be able to understand the layout because of the position of the inputs and outputs okay so starting from there now I need to do is I need to actually energize the PLC so from this live from this transformer here which is AC I need to convert that to a 24 volt DC so I'm gonna go into my electrical library and I'm gonna go here into energy converter and I'm gonna take a rectifier from AC to DC so I'll take it on my schematic here I can rotate it so edit rotate right like this you see again it's a bit big so I'm just gonna zoom in a bit I'm going to try to align these so I'm going to redo the size you know I, I shrink it like that because I know that I have a lot of elements to put on my drawing but obviously for you if you just use one of those at a time you can leave it the size it is by default and you'll be fine okay it's just that I'm just trying to make it so it adapts well to my current circuit so now I'm going to come here and get my 120 volt you see when I was telling you about getting off the grid this what could happen because if I do view grid you see the connectors are not well aligned anymore so that could create sometimes uh, issues like that with the wires okay so it is not recommend to get off the grid but if you really have to you know you can adjust it a bit like this and now let's get here the other voltage I'm going to take off this uh, push button I'll leave it like that for now okay and then I need to click twice on this because I want to make sure that I'm going from 120 to 24 volt and I want to display these on my schematic so I know 
what's the voltage that's being converted. So here I can put my 24 volt and 120 volt here. So now that's done, I need to go and energize my PLC. So I'm going to try to avoid going over the input and output. So let's go down here. And let's just come here like this and connect here. Same thing with this one. Let's connect here and go like this here. I'm going to take these two lines and make them power wire. And keep in mind, if you want, I can take these wires and put them a different color. If I go edit, I can say, okay, this will be blue. So it's, you know, you can change the color so it's more visual if you want. That's up to you to decide, okay? Let's leave them blue like that. It doesn't really matter. So now we're actually energizing our PLC. So now we'll need to create a bit uh, the sequence, okay? So if we go back to the PowerPoint, you see here we actually have a start, stop, and we have the two sensors that's coming from the cylinder that will be connected to the input card of the PLC. So that's what we need to do. So let's go back to Automation Studio. Oh, sorry. And here, let's do those. So let's take a button. So electrical component here. Push button. This push button, I have a light inside. So I like these. So let's put like a button here. And then let's put another one red here that's going to be my stop button. Okay. I can put them like that. Can be one over the other. And then I want to write uh, start and stop, you know, above it. I can use just the text here in the home. Or I can click twice on the component. And here I can put like to display the component name. And I'm just going to change that, let's say, to start and stop. So start for this one. I can place it here. And I can actually change the font also. I can go edit, put bold, and a bit bigger like that. So start. And on this one, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to click twice, and I'm going to put here stop instead. And display the stop. So you see, instead of having to remember this, the, what I did for the formatting of the tag, I can select it like this, go for the painter, and just paint it on the stop. And now I'm going to have the exact same look for both font. You see, when you try to move it like this, it moves like it jumps pretty big, you know, because it follows the grid, okay? If you need to move it very precisely for any reason, you can go to home here and you can actually change the grid step. If I go like a quarter, you see I have much more flexibility now to put it exactly where I want, okay? So this is, it's just important that you try to put it back to grid after so when you move components around, the connectors will be well aligned and we won't have something like here where we, the lines aren't, aren't that great to look at, okay? So the start and stop, so I'm just going to need to energize these. So basically, I'm going to come from the positive ear, connect my two buttons like that. And this, the start, I'm going to connect it to my in zero ear of the card. And my stop, I'm going to connect it to my, let's say, in uh, in two. Doesn't matter. I can put it in one, in two. I just want to put a bit more space. And if you remember now, on our pneumatic components, if I click here and I go twice on the pneumatic, we had a PS1 and PS2, which were the proximity sensor. So I need to receive signal from these on my PLC. So let's go back to the electrical technical. And I'm going to come here. And I'm actually going to go into the electrical control here. And I'm going to take into the control, into the sensors, position sensor, proximity sensor, let's say. And I'm just going to take here a proximity sensor. Uh, this is touch sensitive proximity sensor here. So I normally open like this. And this one is going to be linked to my PRX1. So click twice on it. Go to variable assignment. Here search for P. 
and you see PS1 is here. So even though it's on a separate document, you can still connect them together, okay? So now you see that I'm, it's showing like an S1 here, which is the internal ID of the component. But I wanted to show the link that on the PS1. So I can click twice on this component, okay? Go to data, remove the star, because the star just like shows just the, 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 the favorite fields, basically. I like to show all the fields. If you select your PS1, you just need to go here on show detail and display alias that's all you need to do okay so it's a bit like uh, awkward i would say but this is will be a change in the next version it's going to display the ps1 by default okay but for now just make it like that uh, to be able to create your schematic so let's connect this here and the ps1 i'm going to put it let's say let's jump and put it on my n4 here i need a second one for the ps2 so instead of taking it from the library, I'm going to hold the control key, drag it down here. And you see, since this one is already configured to display the alias, if I click twice on it, go to variable assignment, I'm going to erase the link. So you select it and you click here to delete the link. And I'm going to link it now to PS2. When I close, because it was configured to show the alias, here it is. So connect this here and then bring that to my input 6, for example. So now I actually have my inputs set for the PLC. And now I'm going to just actually uh, put my output. Okay. So uh, this is something uh, about the PLC. It needs to actually bring voltage from here to uh, the second part below. Okay, so let's just connect this like that. It's to, it's to supply the other card, or I'm not too sure. Okay, this I would need to read on the, the technical uh, documentation of the PLC because that's something interesting, also. Okay, exactly what the way I, I'm saying it now, this is exactly like your students will be faced uh, in the industry because you may teach them how to work with uh, Allen Bradley or Siemens or any other brand. But when they go out on the field and they have a different PLC to work with, well, they need to be, to go onto the technical data and try to figure out, okay, how this is connected. And this is why by providing you in the PLC with all kinds of models like this, students will be much more efficient in connecting all kinds of PLCs by actually referring to the technical specification of these PLC. Okay? So now that I've done this, so let's just do a little save here. So I just saved that as project two, part two of the project. And now uh, for my output, I'm actually going to go, if I go here on my diagram one, I need to trigger soul one and soul two. So let's go back here and do the same thing. So I'm just going to put a solenoid. So come here. And I'm going to put here into the control section, solenoids, here. Let's connect this on my out zero, for example. And this, I'm going to call it sol1. When I click twice, then I'm going to do another one that I'll connect here. I'm just going to move it a bit because I'll need more space. This one, I'm going to change its name to sol2. Click twice on it, change the name here to Soul2, enter. Because these are actually transmitter, okay? So they need to be connected to my, my other uh, pneumatic components that will do that after. So let's connect this to my zero here and this one to the one. Oh, sorry, didn't go for further enough. Okay, like that. So let's move this a bit. Okay, so so that will be we'll take a bit more space like that. So soul one here, soul two over here, and I'm gonna also need to actually I want my contactor to be triggered with an output of my PLC. Okay, so let's just move these two closer. So I'm gonna actually put a relay coil here. 
So let's put uh, a relay here on my output uh, 2. Okay. And this one, I'm going to call it, let's say, a C control relay 1. Or I can put it like, I don't know, a contactor 1, let's say. Okay. I go like this. I connect this here on my, oh, I want to use it on my output 2. So go here too. Connect these together because actually what I need to do now is I just need to bring these one. You see the way I was jumping here. This is my common here on this card. So I can just go get it directly on the card here. So this will be triggering soul one, soul two. And now instead of having a push button here, I'm going to erase the push button. And I'm going to put a contact of C1. So I'm going to take a normally open contact here. It's going to move to the library close and I'll link that to filter for C and here C1 click twice so now this is a contact of C1 that I will connect right here let's just move it a bit like that and I'm going to energize that over here so now if I look at this circuit I actually have a start stop the prox from the pneumatic cylinder and the soul 1, soul 2 that will trigger the a pneumatic component. Now there's one more thing I need to do is like I was telling you before I want my motor here to actually spin my compressor on my pneumatic document. So I'm going to come here into the main library. Okay then I go and drive in transmission. I go transmission and you see mechanical jump. So that's how it works. So if I drop it like that, I'm going to connect it over here. And if I click twice on it, there's an association here. So let's type this um, uh, motor uh, elect, let's say. Okay. So now I have a motor elect here. And I'm going to go into my pneumatic. And instead, I'm going to erase this motor here. And I'm going to take, again, the same thing. Mechanical jump. I'm going to need to flip it. So edit, flip, horizontally like that. Connect it over here. Click twice. And just select this one here. Double click on it. And now you see that it is link motor elect. This is way too big, so I'm just going to shrink it a bit. So this is going to from motor elect. And if I go on to my electrical circuit, this is motor elect that's going from here. I'm going to shrink it a bit also. So this is how the link is made. So now all I need to do is I'm going to save. So my circuit here is quite done. Okay. So I'm just going to minimize this window. So I'm going to hit the square here. So now you see I have this page that I'm going to place, let's say, over here, just so it takes like a part of my screen. I'm going to take the pneumatic also, which I'm going to shrink, let's say like here. I'm going to right click and do a zoom all component, so we see all the circuit. Same thing here, zoom all component, and we see the entire electrical part of it. Okay, obviously I can maximize that, you know, so it's a bit bigger when I zoom all, but this is something that we can fine tune afterwards. Okay, now the only thing I'm missing basically is that you see, remember we've put soul one and soul two here, and I basically need to link that to my valve here. So if I click twice on the pneumatic valve, I go variable assignment, you see we have soul one and soul two. So if I here filter for S, so soul one here will be filled with soul one. And so the link is made. And soul two, I'm going to fill link it with soul two here. So now these two are linked together. So if I zoom out, so it fits better like this. Now if I start the simulation, you see my PS1 here is closed because it is activated here on my circuit and my input 4 is actually triggered because it's closed. 
So it's easy for students afterwards to actually follow what's going on in the system because everything works together. So if I push start, you see my N0 went on. If I push stop, my N2 went on. And now when I'm going to energize my motor, you'll see that this will actually spin the compressor on my other circuit. So I hope you enjoyed this part. So this is the part two of our multi-technology circuit. We will be uh, doing next week the PLC part that will control the schematic completely that we have over here. So sorry it took a bit more time than I thought, but uh, I thought it was important to go very easy step by step. So thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, uh, this is the time. So I will review what you have uh, written in the, the question comments. And or if you want to raise your hand, uh, just let me know and I will give you the mic so you can actually ask your question live and I'll do my best to answer it. So uh, thanks again. We hope to see you next week to finalize this multi-technology project with the PLC and then uh, stay safe and then um, I'm open for questions.